<clears throat> Hello, y'all. I go by the name of Bugsy Smooth. Some of y'all may know me as Petty Luther King, or Petty for short. And you know, this year I'm working on several projects. And one of these projects I'm working on is very special to me. See, I'm working on an audiobook. And this audiobook is just a collection of comedic stories and, you know, crazy events that has happened in my rather interesting life. You know, I talk about things such as my family situations and my uh, player days, my Mackish days. So it's going to be pretty crazy. I think you guys will enjoy this. I really do. But for now, I'm going to give you all a preview chapter from the audiobook. And this chapter is called, You Funky Thought, I Thought You Gave Me Crabs. Now, in my early adolescence, as pubic hair began to grow on my genitals, I started to notice that the more pubic hair I grew, the more I slowly started to morph from an ugly little boy into a handsome young man. So handsome that all the girls in my neighborhood started to take notice. They started to pay attention to me. So I quickly recognized my power. Damn. I can pull all these skeezers. And yes, I said skeezers. I'm using old school player terminology. Kind of showing my age, but the only issue I had was I didn't have no game. But I figured who trips, right? I mean, I'm the only good looking dude in my neighborhood and all these other dudes is ugly. These dudes was trifling. So as long as I maintain my good looks, I control the market. That's how I was thinking. See? The problem with having no game is you can't really branch out and go for all the nice looking girls that you really want that live in other neighborhoods. So you're pretty much limited to the confines of your 30 block radius and you tend to go for whatever girls are available to you. And what do you think was available to me? <sighs> you guessed it. Fat women. <laughs> women that were built like Ford trucks. Built like refrigerators. Built like file cabinets. Built like dirty snow cones. Gabby Sidibe looking chicks. I'm talking about chicks that had big bellies in the front, no butt in the back. Built like a lowercase d. And I ain't have no standards. I was messing with all of them. Hood rats, skeezers, chicken heads. I was a hood rat connoisseur. And the problem when you have no standards, the first dime that chooses up on you, you become excited. You become very elated. So we're going to speed this up. Fast forward to age 16. Now, I was fortunate enough to have a lovely mother that instilled the hustling mentality in me early. So by the time I was 16, I had my driver's license in my first car. So I was in full Mac mode. I was in what I call my mojo player stage. You know what a mojo player is? A mojo player is the first level of player when you are just figuring out your game. You're figuring out what game works for you, what doesn't work for you. You're finding out your mojo. So, I thought I was the Mac of the century. I had my ride. I had a driver's license. I had a job that was paying me $9 an hour. I was balling. And I was a good Muslim. See, I'm Muslim, right? And I used to drive up to the mosque every day and pray all my prayers there. Now, when you go to the mosque, the first thing you'll realize is that the men and women are separate. Men got their side, the women got their side. So, being the ignorant player that I was, I said, you know what? Today I'm going to go to the women's side and see what's popping. So I go to the women's side and I'm in full Mac mode. So I'm campaigning on the women's side. May God forgive me. So the first thing I see is this shorty on the stairs waving at me. So I'm like, who the hell is that? Now, mind you, you got to understand, the neighborhood that I grew up in, my standards were so low that I thought a girl who was thick was a BBW. I'm talking about she had to have a tummy, you know, some belly, a big old butt. That's what I thought thick was. But when I met this woman, it changed my life, boy. Let me tell you. So, 
this shorty is waving at me. And she's signaling for me to come over there and talk to her. Now, mind you, I'm in full Mac mode. So I ain't playing that. I'm like, man, hell no. Nah. You better do an about face. You want to come talk to me, get up and come walk over to me and come talk to me. Now, we're not saying none of this. We're having a nonverbal conversation from a distance. No words are being spoke. It's just all verbal. So we going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I'm like, oh, shoot. So we meet halfway next to a dumpster. I thought this was quite symbolic being that I was a scumbag at the time and I was trash. So me standing next to a trash can and I'm standing next to a potential scumbag as well because she was trash too. But we're going to get to that later. Now, we talking and she's like, so what's your name? And I'm like, the Mac of the century. See, I wasn't really confident at that time period. So I came across arrogant because I was really shy deep down inside. So. I would always overcompensate and it would come out arrogant. So I would say some stuff like the Mac of the century. You don't know who I am, girl. Of course, this chick didn't know who I was, but that's how I was talking. And this trash bucket actually thought that was cute. So she was like, hey, you so silly. But the thing that bugged me out about her was she was a dime. This woman was slim built. She had a big old butt, a very beautiful face, dimples. She was cute. And I was like, damn. And, and and sometimes players, you understand, when when a dime is choosing up on you, the game be so good that you think that it's a setup. You think that you setting up to be robbed. Like you think it's too good to be true. That you ain't even kicking your feet up and enjoying the choosing. So that's that's how I was acting. I'm thinking she wants something from me. So I immediately get on the defense and I'm like, look. I ain't buying no ice cream. I ain't buying no food. I spent my last few dollars on lunch. I'm not tricking my money off because I I didn't want this woman to get the idea that I was one big trick. See, I was very privy to that game even back then. I never would trick my money off. So I was letting her know off break. And she was like, you so cute. Nah, we don't have to go out to eat. Now. I know I couldn't text this woman because my text cost 35 cents. You remember back in the day when you had the flip phones and you were on the pay plans and your mother was paying your phone bill. You didn't want to you didn't want to text nobody because it cost like 35, 40 cents per text. (laughs) And then I couldn't call the woman because it wasn't nine o'clock yet. So I had to wait until nine o'clock. I used to wait till nine or one to call somebody just to make sure for that extra minute. You know, I don't get charged to the phone company. You don't play no games with me. So I ain't want no room to chance. You know what I'm saying? So 901 hit and I call her that same night. Right. And she picks up and she's, you know, talking all cute. And she's like, hey, you know, hey, I'm glad you called. You know, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. So what we going to do? So she responds, whatever you would like to do. So I'm like, all right. So I'm thinking to myself. I'm going to take this woman somewhere where we can be alone. No distractions. Just me, her, and some good game. So I take it to the only place that I know is the best place for a player to take a young prospect. Landmark Mall. Now, if you're from Northern Virginia, particularly the Alexandria, Annandale, Falls Church area, you know about Landmark Mall. Landmark Mall is this whack mall that's always empty. It's been empty for years. I don't know how the hell it's still there. And ain't nothing but two Asian people and uh, African security guard that be up in there. And the Asian people be selling massages, $20 an hour massages. And all they ever do is just yell at you. I know Mac. I know player. Only six people in here. I'm like, yo, it's only me by myself. I no care. And then the African security guard get on my nerves because he be thinking that he's some top flight security and he's protecting the most prestigious and important mall in the world. Well, ain't nothing in there. He'd be like, you need to go home. It's past nine o'clock. You're not supposed to be here. I'm like, dog, ain't nothing for me to steal from this mall. Ain't nothing up in it. I no care. You need to go home. Black bastard. Sick of you. No education. No lazy. All you ever do is just go around the mall and that's it. Looking to steal. Get a job. I was like, oh, Lord have mercy. But when I showed up with this chick, though, all the energy shift. Now he want to be my friend. Oh, my friend. 
Long time no see. You know how dudes get when they see you with a dime. The daps be extra hard. The, 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 the energy just be different. This is exactly how he was like. He hopped right on my D right then and there. Ooh, what is up, my friend? What is up, my friend? I said, this is Negro. You don't even know my first name. Get out of my face. So the reason why I took this woman to Landmark Mall is because they have the arcade. And that stuff is like 25 cent per game. Now, with this young lady that I was with, just to give y'all some context. If you know anything about me. You know that I refer to hood rats as dust balls, dust buckets, people of the dusty community. Now, this woman was no different. The only difference was she was a responsible ratchet. Now, a responsible ratchet ain't nothing but a glorified hood rat. It's a hood rat with a costume. The responsible ratchet is one who has ambition, drive. She goes to school. She has something going for herself. She's intelligent to some degree. But any given moment, she can take off the costume and revert right back to being a hood rat. And that's what this woman was. And I ain't going to say her name, but we just going to call her Skeezer. So her name is Skeezer. Now, Skeezer was overly freaky for no reason. It threw me off. So we at the arcade. We playing the racing game, right? And at this age, I usually build up to being freaky with a girl. You know what I'm saying? Usually, a girl makes me put time in. You know, I put time into a woman, you know, give it at least two, three weeks. This girl was ready to get down at the arcade. She was juggling all over my testicles and all that. Bro, I was like, damn, you want to get up out of here? She's like, let's get up out of here. So we leave. We go to the car, get inside the car. And I turn on one of my favorite songs at that time, 3 Six Mafia, Slob on My Knob. A corn on a cob, right? So she turns the radio off, turns my song off, and she says, I bet you would want me to slob on your knob, wouldn't you? Now, you see that long pause? So I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, oh, shoot. She really trying to get it in. So mind you, I'm still a shy dude at this time, right? You know, because prior to this, I ain't never really been sexual before with a woman. You know, the most I've done with the dusty hood rats in my neighborhood was rub on a boob or two, kiss, neck kisses, chest kisses, kissing between thighs, you know, stuff like that. Not really too crazy, right? But right now, at this moment, I'm like, oh, nah, it's about to get triple X rated in here. So it's about 10 o'clock at night, 1030 parking lot kind of empty as it usually is in the parking lot of landmark mall so i'm like damn i can't do nothing sexual in my car because the police might come around and i might get in trouble and i don't know what kind of charge that is so i'm like all right let me go ahead and go somewhere else so we end up driving for a little while and end up parking next to some woods hop out go in the woods and then i just do what it do stop on my knob now i want to paint a picture to y'all how this woman really looked this wasn't no overly skankish dressed woman. This woman did not have a thought uniform on at all. This was a well-dressed, respectable Muslim woman. She had a full hijab on, not a single strand of weave was hanging out. She wasn't even showing a calf muscle. But she was the dirtiest talking broad I've ever met. This, this woman at 16 years old was talking to me like she, we were on a porn set. She was like, look, you like when my mouth is wide open, don't you? Yeah, you like when it's open. I said, girl, why are you talking to me like this? I started to pull out the Quran. I'm like, L -l let me go ahead and read you some surahs real quick. <laughs> I turned real religious real fast. I'm like, let me rebuke the devil, damn it. But man, she was the most dirtiest talking broad and she was turning me out. I'm like, yo, hold up. What, what is going on? Why are you this nasty at this age, bro? Like, it don't make no damn sense. Let's talk about this, right? <laughs> so then we're going to speed this up, right? So the next morning I wake up, I notice that I have this little rash on my left arm. And I'm like, damn, what the hell is that? And it was kind of like a big rash. It was red. It was itchy, too. And I was just like, what the hell is going on, right? But I ain't think much of it. I was like, eh, whatever. So then as the day progressed, I noticed that I started to get a little, like, sick. A little sick and itchy. You know what I'm saying? I started to get bumps on my right arm, bumps on my left arm, rashes on my leg. And most importantly, my pubic hairs was on fire. Like, it felt like, like 
and mosquitoes bit me everywhere. I, I'm itching everywhere and everything. And I'm like, what the hell is going on, man? It's crazy. So everybody in the neighborhood has that one nasty dude that live in their neighborhood that knows about every STD known to man, right? So I go to my little old nasty homie in my neighborhood that be smashing everything walking. He's the type of guy that says, well, vagina is vagina, so you might as well get it in. He that type of dude. He nasty. He done had every single disease you can ever think of, right? And we just going to call him Germ. I'm not going to say his real name, but we just going to call him Germ. So Germ was knowledgeable in every disease that I wasn't knowledgeable in. See, like, I knew about HIV and AIDS, but... I ain't know about no STD and I didn't even know I had an STD. So I went to Germ and I said, look, man, I got all these bumps and bruises right here, like these rashes and I'm itching everywhere. And I was with a girl last night. And it just happened last night. And I wake up this morning and all this stuff is on me. And he's like, oh, don't even worry about it, man. It's probably some crabs. Just go to the store, get you a box of red and just rub it right off. And he said it so casually, like it happens to him every day. So I was like, uh, all right. <laughs> So at this point, I'm kind of scared. I'm a little uncomfortable. Like, damn, I'm like, I didn't even have sex with this woman. Like, all I did was get a little sucky sucky. You know, that's all I did. You know, that's all I got. You know, I know you can't get no STD from that. But at the time, I was like, I didn't know. I wasn't sure. I'm like, damn. Then I thought about that little scene from Boys in the Hood when little old boy asked Ice Cube, hey, can you get AIDS from a girl sucking you off? And they all just laughed. So I'm like, damn, that could either be true or not true. But I don't know. And as the day progressed, like I started to get a headache. And then my voice, my throat started to get a little hoarse. And I had a sore throat. So I'm like, damn. So then the next day I wake up and I'm full blown sick. Like I have a whole cold. And I still itching a little bit. But it wasn't as bad as the day before. But I was still itching. I was so mad, bro. I was like, oh, no. Nah. When I see this girl is on site, this girl done gave me something. So we're going to fight when I see her. Now, I was ready to send her a long, vicious, emotional OJ Simpson type text. But remember, my text was 35 cent per text and I wasn't trying to race no 35 cent. You know what I'm talking about? And it was not nine o'clock yet. So I couldn't make that phone call. So I had to wait a bunch of hours just so I can uh, tell this woman in full fledged Mac mode that I'm about to smack her when I see her. So I'm practicing in the mirror what I'm going to say to this chick on the phone, right? As soon as 9 on 1 roll around, I call her. She ain't answer. I call her again. She ain't answer. So I left her a voice message. I said, I had my little horse voice on, man. I barely had could talk. So I was like, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill what the freak you do to me, chick. I'm going to kill you. I couldn't sound as gangster as I wanted to sound. It wasn't as pimpish as I wanted it to sound. So I was like, damn, I already done left the message after the tone. I can't take it back. It was too late. So then two days later, I feel much better. I'm not itching no more and I'm not sick anymore. So I'm feeling good. So I'm still curious, like, the hell happened to me, man? After I messed with this woman, I automatically just fall ill. Thought I was going to die. So a few days later, after the fact, I run into my homie and my homie's telling me he's talking to this girl. And I'm like, word, that's what's up, bro. What she look like? And he shows me a picture and it's the same girl that I went to Landmark Mall with that was choosing up on me at the mosque. So I'm like, wait, hold up, bro. You messing with that? He's like, yeah, bro. That's the neighborhood skeezer right there, man. Shoot, my whole neighborhood hit. It's my turn. And I'm like, bruh, after I messed with her, I was like, I thought I caught something. And he looked at me. He go, bruh, you probably did catch something. You better go to the doctors and get yourself checked. And I'm like, yo, I ain't really have sex with her, though. I just got a little sucky sucky. This Negro looked at me. Boy, do you know he was rolling? <laughs> Boy, if you don't get a hell up, <laughs> boy, I was standing there with the Kevin Hart. I just ate a booty face. I was like, "Oh, word, you just gonna clown me like that?" He said, "Boy, if you don't get up out of here, boy."
<laughs> with that nonsense. <sighs> oh, so I learned a valuable lesson that day. Never, ever mess with the neighborhood skeezer because you might think you get some crabs. I am Bugsy Smooth, and this concludes the chapter. You funky thought, I thought you gave me some crabs. Thank you.